Okay, uh, thanks Jenny, um, and thank you to people who've spoken so far. It's been really good to, to hear from them. Um, I'm going to speak to a little bit about my kind of journey through maths, um, from school onwards, what I do at the moment, what I'm kind of hoping to do, and how I've kind of got to where I am. Um, so I'm currently uh, a final year PhD student at the University of Manchester. Um, I actually handed in my thesis a couple of weeks ago. Um, I study, my course title is Quantitative and Biophysical Biology. Um, and that mouthful essentially means that they've taken mathematicians, physicists, such as me, and thrown us into biology um, and to see whether we can swim and kind of model mathematically problems in biology and come up with uh, solutions to biological problems. Um, in terms, from a career's point of view, my journey to my PhD definitely hasn't been a, this is what I've always wanted to do and this is, you know, I've worked to get this point, um, for, you know, point A to B journey. I've taken a bit of a circuitous route, as you might be able to see from the, the bullet points on this slide. Um, I started off doing a mathematics degree um, as an undergraduate at the University of Oxford um, and then wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do with that, um, but I've always enjoyed teaching and I did a couple of maths education modules in my undergraduate. I was then lucky enough to get a position um, at Christ College in Christchurch in New Zealand, teaching maths there, and that should say 2012 to 2013, not 23. Um, and whilst I was over there, I applied for and was lucky enough to get a position to do a, a master's in theoretical physics at King's College London. Um, again, my motivation for that was just, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the maths. I really enjoyed the physics. It's something that fascinated me that I wanted to do more. So that I did for two years whilst working part-time to be able to, to fund myself. Um, I then took another year and worked as an A-level maths teacher at a college in London. Whilst I, I think by that point, I realized that I wanted to do a PhD and I wanted to go down the academic route. Um, but I hadn't quite figured out exactly what it was I wanted to do. So that year in teaching really helped me to be able to look around and fight, look for the course that I might want to do, but it also gave me some absolutely fantastic skills. Um, and anyone who might consider a, a career in teaching, um, it's definitely something I can see myself doing in the future. And it's challenging, um, as I'm sure none of you will, will uh, underestimate, but it's you, the, some of the skills that you pick up are so incredibly useful and so valuable. And I don't think you, the best way to really understand the subject is to have to try and teach it to someone else. Um, so I've kind of taken a bit of a secured route then to get to the PhD that I'm doing at the moment um, that's involved also a lot of uh, rugby along the way. So that's that picture on the left hand side is me playing rugby for University of Manchester. Um, so I guess the kind of takeaway message I want to give from that is that as this is a kind of a careers talk is if you don't, I, I never was someone who had a career in mind when I was at school. I had four or five different things. I thought that would be cool. That would be interesting. That would be interesting to do. Don't feel like at you know, 16, 17, 18, you have to have a planned out 20, 30 year career that you know exactly what you want to do. If you do, fantastic. If not, and you just know that maths is something that really interests you and that you find really interesting and you know, think that you're good at, then go for it. Because the, great, the brilliant thing about maths is it doesn't close any doors for you. If anything, it opens more. Um, so what do I do now in my, in my PhD? Um, so my day-to-day -day life, a, a sort of typical day is a bit of a non-existent thing because it entirely depends what I'm doing. So I do a lot of data analysis. So I'm looking at results of biological experiments from biologists, analyzing them, trying to get conclusions from those. Um, I then also do a lot of creating my own mathematical models. So trying to come up with equations, systems of equations that will describe a mathematical process. This picture here um, of a load of circles is a, what you get if you take a cross section through a tendon and take a picture of it using an electron microscope um, and then use an algorithm to kind of separate the little, these are collagen fibers that then act as that kind of bungee cord in your tendons. So I kind of, I've built a model that models the mechanics of how that responds to being pulled and pushed as you exercise. I also, as part of my PhD, um, have been doing some actual biology. So my, one of the parts of my course, which I found really fascinating, 
especially someone who last did biology in kind of GCSE level, um, was actually getting some training and going into the lab and doing some biological experiments. So these are, this bottom right image is uh, some mouse cells, cells taken from mice that have had, have been genetically altered to glow when this protein called collagen is, is created. Each bit of light you can see there is a collagen molecule with this little uh, luminescent molecule attached to it that's extracted from a deep sea shrimp and genetically inserted into the into the collagen, which is really cool. Um, and the sort of LED uh, image, you can see what looks like an LED image behind of my name is not just there because I want everyone to see my name, um, is one of my favorite experiments I've done in my PhD. It gave us no scientific results at all, but this in each of these, each of those little circles is a little well about that big um, with about 10,000 cells in each well. And that is just then glowing with this luminescence that I've just mentioned. And it was so bright that you could put it, you could hold the tray in your hand and see it with your own eyes. And this picture was just taken with a normal camera. And that was one of the, a lot of science is spent doing things with things so small that you can't really see them. But this being able to hold something in your hand and say, I can see that this has worked and this is, this science has worked is really, really cool. Um, that's sort of what I do on a day to day basis or what I have been doing for the last four years. Um, so where am I going to do next? What's what can people do after doing a PhD in kind of applied maths or maths and biology? Um, so I started off, uh, I'm actually from West Yorkshire, from Huddersfield. I went to sixth form at a place called Greenhead College, um, which was a fantastic state sixth form um, that supported me. And I eventually got a place at Oxford, as I mentioned, before doing my master's in London. So it's these two pictures here of me graduating. This picture in the bottom right is then uh, the beautiful Christ College in New Zealand. Um, I then came to Manchester. This is me on the university uh, float at Manchester Pride Parade. Um, and then I've been absolutely fortunate enough to secure a position in San Diego next year as a postdoctoral research associate. So this is a picture of where I'm gonna be working as of February next year. Again, doing that similar sort of thing. Um, researching around maths and biology, and we're gonna be looking at rare uh, inherited diseases and how different genetic variations affect how people react to different diseases and react to different treatments. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, hopefully gives you a brief overview of what, overview of what pursuing maths, so kind of PhD uh, can be like. And if anyone's got any questions, I'm more than happy to, to answer them. Uh, so I'll hand back to, to Jenny.